Okay, I want to go over uh, many of the fascinating ways that you can actually fire uh, the new Pulse Buff Digibee and uh, some of the remote as well as corded uh, options uh, for the unit. Now, right now I have plugged in the CSXCV transceiver, which plugs into this port on your Digibee. Now, this allows for frequency and channel use remotely um, via a CyberSync. Now, this is the older unit. The newer unit is a slimmer and uh, slightly a different design for triggering. Then this fits onto your hot shoe. This is also available from Policy Buff. It lets you use this unit or the advanced, the Cyber Commander, which lets you operate, control the modeling output and power output of up to 16 remote strobes. This also fits onto your hot shoe or goes around your neck as a lanyard and lets you adjust the power output and lets you uh, also adjust the modeling illumination. This unit does actually have a built-in light meter for use as a function as well. So this is the Cyber Commander. There is also additionally so underneath the bottom right corner a mini jack sync port. Now what I have up here currently is on top of the unit and this is a mod that I do to all my studio strobes is I have a pocket wizard unit plugged in with cable I can fire both at the same time and this jack goes into the sync port and what this lets me do is it lets me use either my cyber sync remote transmitter to my studio strobes for firing and or the cyber commander for firing and adjusting power and modeling light output but since my Siconic Professional Light Meter operates off the frequencies of the Pocket Wizard units, I am able to test remotely whatever illumination I want sent to here but fire the unit through the CyberSync Commander. Additionally so, in slave mode, when I hit this button and you see the light is on, there's a little frosted dome right up here at top which lets me use any remote flash unit, even if it's a pop-up flash on your camera or the little built-in uh, strobe on your Fuji, for example, or uh, any other little uh, smaller uh, um, smaller uh, Leica-type camera that has a built-in flash. You can even use it in commander mode, and uh, that will fire uh, the Digibee unit via the slave dome up here, but you actually do have to physically come up to the unit and turn the slave function on or off. And additionally so, since a lot of people have purchased the flash Q triggers, here's the transmitter unit, that is also an option, but you would have to purchase something additionally so, and they run about ten dollars. And it is this little unit that actually sits on the receiver, this is a Nikon AS15, and what this is, is a hot shoe adapter with a PC sync connector port on the front, and then you would need a PC sync to mini jack connector cord which is like three dollars and let me take this unit off here right now see this is a little light mod unit that I place on all of my uh, Paul C. Buff uh, studio strobes it is just a simple cold shoe with a piece of velcro on the bottom and is removable and I have a piece of velcro on the top of my digibee these are like two dollars what this lets me do is have different options for dual uh, triggering, triggering for testing uh, with my studio, uh, excuse me, my professional light meter and of course obviously the receiver unit right here for actually firing the unit and adjusting flash output and adjusting modeling illumination but what I could do with the receiver unit on the flash cue triggers is place it up here and exactly like the pocket wizard plug this into the sink port right below, the hole is right underneath here let me plug it in here we go. I think I have the unit powered off right now. Yeah, I know I have the unit powered off. But anyway, it does work perfectly fine. So that is what you would need to do if you wanted to use the flash cue triggers. But that would work perfectly fine also. Additionally so, using the sync port, when what comes with the Digibee, it is a corded cable. I forget the exact length on this cable, but it is a PC sync port connector for attaching to your camera to mini jack, which plugs into the sync port right here. So you could use a corded remote, excuse me, a corded uh, cable from your sync port on your Digibee to the uh, PC sync connector on your camera. 
So you have a lot of options. And, by the way, there is no conflict by having the CyberSync receiver plugged in or, additionally so, either the uh, Flash Q trigger adapter. They will both trigger you the unit individually so there is no conflict and uh, this is a nice feature this is an incredibly nice feature if you're out with your subject like I am with the professional light meter and uh, my light meter has a built-in a radio transmitter and it transmits to my pocket wizard and that will test fire my studio strobe but then I can either use the cyber commander or what I use uh, the cyber sync uh, uh, cyber sync transmitter or my preference, the Cyber Commander, which gives me a lot of options for adjusting power output and adjusting modeling illumination. I'll use that off the hot shoe of my camera. Or what I actually do use is I have this attached to the back of uh, my professional light meter or a lot of people, since there's a lanyard loop right here on the top, they have this hanging around their neck. And then what you would do is have this tiny module. Like I said, this has been replaced by a, a slightly more advanced, a smaller unit, but it's essentially the, the exact same thing. The CyberSync transmitter, the CST transmitter from Pulse Buff, which communicates to this receiver, the CyberSync CSXCV transceiver and this fires the unit so you have a lot of options for firing corded cable from camera you have a slave mode which means you could use any remote flash speed light use this as a secondary slave unit since now is in slave mode or for example the tiny built-in pop-up flash on your camera you could use it in commander mode so that the illumination from the built-in flash or the pop-up flash on your camera does not affect the lighting output of the composition that you're taking but it's just enough to send the signal via the flash to the slave dome located right here this frosted white dome and uh, so those are the options for both corded and wireless remote uh, triggering and adjustment of both power and modeling illumination to the Digibee and that is a very advanced setup so you have a very simple setup not complex to learn but very advanced insofar as it gives you a tremendous amount of options okay if you wanted to keep things really really cheap and just buy the Digibee itself and use it as a optical slave or go off of a corded uh, flash cable into the sync port which the Digibee does come with or if you want more of the uh, more advanced options or a lot of professional photographers already have pocket wizards you could simply attach a pocket wizard uh, to the unit or actually have it a lot of people will actually have it dangling down off of their light stand attached somehow but that is actually why I put in this little cold shoe adapter which let, lets me attach uh, my pocket wizard on top I mean, it is very simple. It only costs a couple bucks. Let me actually tilt the unit down so you can see that. Here we go. There's the slave dome. And like I said, this just attaches via Velcro, so I have a strip of Velcro. This is an ingenious little light mod that uh, I learned from another professional strobist many, many years ago. And like I said, these little cold shoe adapters, I just put a piece of Velcro right there. You just pop it right on top, wiggle it in to get it set, and that way I can use two different triggering systems, one for my professional light meter and the other one from my camera. So those are the options for triggering the new advanced and miniature. We're talking about a tiny but high power. I'm talking about a low unit with a huge punch. And uh, I'm going to be going over the features on how to use the Digibee, and it is remarkably simple. Even the owner's manual for the Digibee is very, very simplex. So those people that are intimidated by studio strobes will not have any issue once they watch the videos that I will be making over the next day or two on how to use the Digibee. I could literally train someone how to use this thing in about 25 minutes. Everything else is up to you and your creativity as far as using it and uh, because it's about surpassing the gear. Once, you know, and when you have really simple gear and it goes to the back of your mind and it becomes muscle memory, you don't even have to think about it, then you can focus on the composition. Then you could focus on your photography and not be 
focused on the gear and what Paul C. Buff has done by uh, creating this very very powerful yet very simple to use yet has advanced functionality I mean I have slave input here CyberSync receiver here, sync port connector here. I have a lot of options for triggering the unit, including dual input triggering, sync port at the same time as my CyberSync commander. So, and that's wonderful. Turn the unit off right now. And yes, it is fan cooled. And you have 400 watts of LED illumination. And on the DigiB, you have two and a half watt seconds to 160 watt seconds of xenon flash tube output or on the DB800 you have 10 watt seconds excuse me 5 watt seconds to uh, 320 watt seconds of uh, flash output off of this xenon tube right here which you never want to touch by the way because oil from your fingerprints uh, would leave a mark that uh, actually adversely affects the flash tube but uh, that's not an issue either thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned over the next day or so, and I'm going to go over the unit in fine detail. So much so that you may not even have to read the user's manual, but the user's manual is very, very small for this. This unit, the DB400, is $310. Check the links below if you want to grab one. And then the more powerful unit is also listed on the website. I'll give the link below for that, which is the DB800. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye!